have you here in church and to celebrate this day as we begin the Advent season. I'm Reverend Charles Ulick. I'm the rector and pastor here at Grace Episcopal Church, and especially a welcome to any of our guests this day. Let us stand and rejoice and sing number 57, found in your blue hymnal. Lo, the he comes with the clouds descending.
We continue our service on page 355 in your Book of Common Prayer, the Red Book, page 355. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time we will have the lighting of the Advent wreath. Today, we light the first candle of the Advent wreath. This is the candle of hope. Sleepers, awake, be constantly on the watch. O oh God, let us be mindful of the presence of Jesus, who is the light of the world that arises, the one who leads us through the darkness. May this light on our Advent wreath be a reminder to be mindful within ourselves as we live out our baptismal covenant in our world. Lord be with you. Let us pray. If you're able, please kneel with me or remain standing. Our colic prayer can be found at the top of page two in your bulletin. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life, in which your son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we hear God's sacred words. A reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. The word that Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. Many people shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. The word of the Lord.
A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans, 13, verses 11 through 14. You know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and, lic and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. The word of the Lord. Let us stand and sing our sequence hymn for the gospel reading, number 68 in your blue hymnal. Rejoice, rejoice, believers. We'll sing the first two verses before the gospel and the third verse after. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. This is from chapter 24, verses 36 through 44. Jesus said to his disciples, About that day and hour no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day Noah entered the ark, and they, and they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So too will be the coming of the Son of Man. The two will be in the field, one will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together, 
One will be taken and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let the house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming in an unexpected hour. The Gospel of the Lord. May what I am about to say be in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. All right, uh, how many of you remember one of these? An old-fashioned alarm clock. These were a most obnoxious invention, I think, <laughs> people have ever made to get people up to get to work or wherever they needed to go. But it is just what Advent is about, keeping time. Keeping time of how are we to be preparing ourselves for God's place in our world as the Son of Jesus Christ, the, the Messiah, Emmanuel. Advent is a season that the church sets aside to help us discern how we are treating one another as people of God, as Christians, how we celebrate Jesus in our life. In difficult times, it's sometimes hard to be a a human being in the world because the world is always throwing everything at it, saying, this is how you should be. And this is how you're supposed to cope. Unfortunately, Advent is also a season that is now with a part of the holidays where it's all about the giving and buying and needing and wanting. We sometimes forget that that the world is not what Jesus was about. It was about us to discern the life of a life of going and building the kingdom of God, about walking in the image and likeness of Jesus. You see, Advent is a time where we set aside apart from the normal stream of life and we try to slow it down. (laughs) Slow it down. How many of you did a Black Friday sale? Okay, I bet you did. Tomorrow is Cyber, Cyber Monday. How many of you are going to do? We do it. We do it. We get caught up in the midst of all the rush and hush of the season that we say is Christmas. But the church tries to help us slow down and see it's just not about Christmas. It's also about us being us. Where we are gifted and talented as people of God, God wants us to also know that his son came into the world to help be a better place. I 
I know this is probably a little ironic, but I love The Simpsons. Have you ever seen the show on Fox? The Simpsons, Homer Simpson, the most narcissistic, narcissistic man there probably is, but he, he's like, he falls over himself and we laugh and he is the epitome of humanity. There's a scene in one of Homer's, the Simpsons episode, where Homer's eating a bag of peanuts and he's watching television and he's on to the last peanut and it rolls underneath the couch. It bounces off the floor and rolls under. He goes underneath and reaches in and as Homer always does, he pulls out, what? A hundred dollar bill. And what does Homer say? But I wanted a peanut. Homer is a reflection of, I think, the writers who reflect back to us, we always are wanting more. We want what we want, and we want it now. And see, God wants us to know that it's not about the want, but it's about being okay in your skin, to be okay with who you are. This is probably the hardest time of the year for people because short, shorter days and it's darker because of the season. It's hard to cope, especially if you've lost a loved one. These are the times when you have to strategize, maybe with a therapist, maybe with a friend, on how to, uh, to go after those things that can bring us joy and hope. The Advent wreath is a way to mark time for us. You can use time like this, but it's fleeting. Advent calendars are around. You can make plans to take a time and slow yourself down from the things that pull us away from joy. To make don't uh, how pulling yourself from away from parties and friends. It's about engaging with others, relishing in friendships and the people we love, taking time and spending an, an amount of time with people. And if it's too much, give yourself an out. Give yourself a time out. Advent is just that, a time for us to discern what brings us hope, joy, light, and peace. The world tries to pull us away from those things. And Advent is a time for us to try to bring them back. Let us awaken our senses, not with the things of the world, the things that tear us down, shame us, tell us we're not better or worse than others, but they give us the joy and gladness that brings us all the things that God is with us, that God is awakening our hearts. Let us walk in the light of God in this Advent season. Let it be a time of renewal for yourself and not just simply, eh, where's the next sale? Let it be a time not to let the things of the world to pull us down, but a time that we may cope and know that God is with us. The expected Messiah, the Son of God. Amen. Let us stand and let us profess our faith with the Nicene Creed found on page 358, page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made.
for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. The power of the Holy Spirit, he came incarnate from the Virgin Mary, was made man. For our sake, he was crucified by the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. The Father and the Son, he has been glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Turning to our prayers as people. Turning to our prayers as people of God, to page four in your bulletin. If you are able, please kneel with me and let us offer these prayers. As the people of God come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord saying, teach us the way, your ways, O God, that we may walk in your paths. Wake from sleep, O God, your church. Let us lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as salvation draws ever nearer. Teach us your ways, O God. Wake from sleep, O God, this nation. May we beat our swords into plowshares and our spears into pruning hooks. May we learn war no more. Teach us your ways, O God. <clears throat> Wake from sleep, O God, your creation. May the mountains rise to meet you and the crops of the fields burst forth in praise. We pray for all those celebrating their birthdays this coming week. Holly Amra, Pamela Hudson, Martha Huggins, George Shaw, Christy Meisenheimer, Janet McCracken, Justin Hancock, Chris Jones, and Amy Thompson. We also pray for those celebrating their wedding anniversary, especially for Sharon and James Michael Barnes. Teach us your ways, O oh God. Wake from sleep, O God, the city of Paducah. May there be peace and prosperity within our walls. Make clear our paths that we may walk in your light. Teach us your ways, O God. Wake from sleep, O God, those in pain and sadness. Deliver them from their darkness that they may rejoice in your light. We pray for the end of the drought and continue our prayers for the hurricane, flood, and tornado victims around the world, our nation, and here in Kentucky. For those on our parish and military prayer list, for those prayers written in our book of prayerful intentions, for all those suffering from COVID and the influenza viruses, for the people of Ukraine, the end of war, and for the victims of gun violence during the month of November. May all those waiting for healing find it and your salvation is near. Teach us your ways, O oh God. Wake all your people from sleep, O oh God. Prepare your saints for that day when the Son of Man will return with the saints at rest to reign with us forever and ever. We especially pray for Patty and Carney Lockett, Dr. Robin Howe, and Mary Reddy Taylor. Teach us your ways, O oh God. Stir up within us the spirit of joyful expectation that leaving behind the night we may run to greet the day that, bring, that draws us near to you, our awaited Savior. Hear our prayers this day and throughout the week. We ask this through Jesus Christ as we begin this Advent season. Amen. 
turning once again back to our Book of Common Prayer on page 360, page 360. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved your neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the Savior, our Son, our Jesus Christ, our mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all of your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us extend to each other a sign of Christ's peace and love. As we come back together, please be seated. A few announcements in this Advent season. Yeah, golly. I'd like to thank uh, Martha Huggins um, and uh, for the beautiful flowers that she is sharing with us for our altar today on behalf of her sister, Amy Thompson's birthday. And uh, also give thanks for Martha's birthday too, this week too. <laughs> like to uh, invite you to come and join us this evening at four o'clock for our, our Advent walk with the other four churches downtown. Uh, it'll begin at Washington Street Baptist Church at four o'clock and then approximately end here uh, around 5 36 o'clock um, tonight uh, and we'll have a reception in our parish hall uh, with inviting all of those who would like to join us. Uh, to celebrate this Advent season together as an ecumenical love as Christians. Uh, if you haven't already, please uh, come into Fletcher Hall, and please come to Fletcher Hall anyway for uh, fellowship afterwards and hospitality with donuts and coffee and other drinks. Uh, we also have the directories that we're trying to update. So if you haven't checked those out, make sure that the directory uh, we found a person who wasn't even in the directory this morning uh, at our eight o'clock service. And so, uh, you know, we got those corrected. So this is why we're doing this to update ourselves. Any other information that you may have changed, cell numbers or email addresses, whatever that might be, just take a look. If you everything is okay, just check it and uh, it'd be helpful to uh, Kimberly as she updates the directory and we get those uh, put out for the next year here. Uh, the giving tree is up, and uh, we are helping uh, the uh, the folks out at the uh, uh, Fresh Start Village, and so uh, single parent uh, mothers and dads who live there uh, are in need of some assistance and of support for the Christmas season uh, upcoming here. And so, just invite you to, uh, if you'd like to participate in that. We also have need for volunteers at the warming center. Uh, during these cold se uh, seasons uh, and months of the year, we uh, are in need of volunteers to spend a couple of hours uh, with those uh, who don't have a place uh, to, to warm themselves. Like to, and also just thank you all for your, uh, your su constant support for our church uh, here at Grace Church. Uh, the pledge drive is concluded, but we also are, uh, like to invite you to please send your pledge cards in so that we know uh, and create, be able to create next year's budget um, and play, prayerfully uh, consider supporting our church. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up as a sacrifice unto God.
We continue our service on page 361 in your Book of Common Prayer, page 361. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore, we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit. And to, be the pe to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of the new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at that last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, 
forever and ever. Amen. Amen. our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. Wherever you are in your faith journey, all baptized Christians are welcome at this communion rail and at this, at this altar. Uh, we are, continue to have only the uh, sharing of the common cup if you would like. Uh, the norm right now is still uh, intincting or dipping the wafer into the uh, small little chalices uh, with the blessed wine. If you'd like to uh, let the uh, Eucharistic minister know, and they will bring the common cup to you if you'd like. If you have need a gluten-free wafer that has been blessed, please indicate that to me as you come forward as well. All are welcome. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Anthony, the body of Christ, the bread Amen. of heaven with us. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven, Elise. The blood of Christ, the cup of our salvation. The blood of Christ, the cup of our salvation. The blood of Christ, the cup of our salvation. blood of Christ, the cup of our salvation.
let us offer our prayer after communion found on page 365 in your Book of Common Prayer, page 365. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. I forgot to mention that we also are starting pageant rehearsals right after service or after hospitality, whatever may come first for Hannah, wrangling up all the kids. And so uh, if you're a parent and uh, you want your child or a teen to be in the pageant for uh, Christmas Eve service, please stay and, uh, or check in at least with Hannah uh, to make arrangements if otherwise. And ple again, please join us for hospitality in Fletcher Hall. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Let us go forth and be the church. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be God. God.